One more way to place textures on surfaces is to actually just paint the textures themselves. And we can do this by using Maya's 3D paint tool. So let's take a look at how this works. We've got 3D paint under the rendering menu set under texturing. Now, before I do anything, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off a layer here. We have two layers. One is for the ground itself. The other is for all the other stuff. So I'm gonna turn off the stuff and just leave the ground and go ahead and select that. And now I'm gonna go into texturing 3D paint tool. And I wanna make sure that I click the options here because we're gonna be working with this quite a bit. And this brings up the tool settings. Now this allows me to float a brush above this surface, but notice how there's a big fat X in the middle of the brush. And that means we can't paint anything. And that's because we need to assign a texture map to that surface. So we do this by going down to the bottom of our tool settings and under file textures, we select which attribute we wanna paint. In this case, I'm going to paint color. So I wanna select color. And then all we have to do is go assign edit textures. This will bring up a menu. And this is where we decide the size of our textures. Now, Maya defaults to 256. I think that's a little too small. So I'm gonna make mine 1024 by 1024. And then we can choose whatever image format we want. I'm gonna use JPEG. So once we hit assign edit textures, now our brush is active. Now this is the standard brush interface that we've used before. You may be familiar with it from sculpting. And we can change the radius of our brush here, or we can change the type of brush as well. So if we want a harder edge brush, we can do that here or here. Now we can also paint with a color. So if we want to, we can just go ahead and select and start to paint. We can also do opacity, so we don't have to paint with the full color. We can just add in color if we want. Now another great tool is Flood. And this allows you to flood the entire surface. Now this is not the same as Photoshop's flood where it will stop when it hits a differing color. This will flood everything no matter what. So I'm gonna go ahead and set a color for this, maybe kind of a medium pale green or something like that and just do a flood paint. When I do, it floods the entire surface. Now we can continue to work with color. If we want to, we can also eyedropper colors. So I can use my eyedropper to select any color I want. So let's say we wanted to paint with a darker version of that same green, we could do that. Or if we want to, we could go to a different color, say maybe something like a brown. And let's go ahead and just paint this mountain brown. Now this will work with a tablet as well. So if you want to use pressure sensitivity, you can do that. And maybe we we'll wanna put a little bit of snow on the top of the mountain. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that, maybe make my brush a little bit smaller and go ahead and put some snow at the top of this mountain. And I also can dial up my opacity to make that stick a little bit better. Now, in addition to paint, we also have other paint operations. So I can smear or blur things. So here I can actually, you can see how I'm smearing this paint, or I could blur the edges, soften things up a little bit. So we really do have a fairly good amount of tools here that we can use to actually paint textures. Now, some people use these to paint actual textures. Other people use it to kind of block in textures that will be painted later in something like Photoshop. Now, once everything is painted, we can select the mesh and go over to our attribute editor and take a look at how the textures are applied. So I have a ground one material and that's what we're using here. And you'll see in the color channel, we do have a map applied. When we go in here, you'll see that we have a map that's very similar to the one that we painted, but we don't have an image name. And the reason for that is that everything is held in memory until you save it. So we have to go back into 3D Paint, make sure we click on the options. 
And let's go down towards the bottom here under File, Textures. Now, when we want to, we can save those textures. And as soon as we do, it saves it out in as a file. Now, that file is located in your Source Images 3D Paint Textures. So if I go to Source Images, we should have a 3D Paint Textures folder and then a folder for the actual file name and then our color. Now, the color is named with the actual name of the object and the channel. So now that you have that image, you could bring that into Photoshop to retouch it or add some more effects. So hopefully this gives you just one more tool to texture and manipulate the textures on objects.